We've been doing something in the last several videos that's very important to functional programming, and by extension, Ramda. Every function we've written so far is what's called a pure function. So what's a pure function? Here's an example of a pure function named add. And here's a definition. A pure function is a function that creates and returns a value based only on its input parameters, and it causes no side effects. That's kind of a mouthful, so let's unpack that by looking at a few rules that pure functions follow. First, a pure function must have input parameters, which of course our add function has. Next, a pure function must not use any stateful values. So for example, the add function must not depend on any variables outside itself that could change over time. Well, add doesn't depend on anything but the supplied parameters, so it follows this rule as well. A pure function must return a value that's determined only by its input parameters. The value returned by the add function is based exclusively on the input parameters, so it follows this rule as well. A pure function must not cause any side effects. So what exactly is a side effect? Well, you can think of a side effect as when your code causes some change outside of itself. So for example, if you run a function and after the function has completed, the code in the function has directly caused some sort of permanent change, that permanent change is a side effect. Some examples of side effects are things like saving something into a database, writing to a file, or making a change in what's seen in a web application. So does the add function make any permanent changes? Nope, it simply returns the result of adding the parameters and nothing else happens, so it follows this rule as well. Cool. Let's look at an impure function, which should help solidify your understanding of what's pure and what's not pure. I'm gonna create a variable using the let keyword. The variable name will be counter, which I'll set to zero. Next, I'll create a function named increment that will simply increase the counter by using the plus plus operator. Let's compare the rules I outlined for pure functions against the increment function we just wrote. First off, does the increment function have input parameters? Nope. Does it use or depend on any stateful values? Yep, it uses the counter. Does it return a value based on its input? Nope. First of all, it doesn't even have any inputs, and second of all, it doesn't return a value. Does the increment function cause any side effects? Yep, it changes the value of the counter. This function breaks all four rules I listed here, but keep in mind it would only need to break one of the rules to be considered impure. Okay, so what's the big deal with pure functions? I mean, why would you want to use pure functions? Well, there's a lot of reasons, and here's a few of the major ones. Pure functions are reusable, often in ways you never anticipated. Pure functions are easy to test. You just provide input values, and you check that the return value is what you expected. Pure functions always produce the same result for a given input, so it's easy to cache expensive function calls. Pure functions are composable, which means you can combine functions to effectively create new functions. Function composition is, in my opinion, the killer feature in Ramda, and we'll use function composition in the next video to clean up and streamline all the logic we've built over the last several videos. But I'm sure many of you are still wondering what exactly is function composition. Well, it's making new functions by combining other pure functions together. Let me give you a quick visual example. Imagine you've got a pure function named slice, which takes apples and returns sliced apples. Then you've got another pure function named bake that takes sliced apples and returns an apple pie. With function composition, we could create a new function, which we'll store in a constant named makePy. Then we'll set makePy to the function returned by calling a compose function, then passing in the functions to compose. So continuing with my last example, we'd pass in the bake function and the slice function. Then we could create a constant named pi and set it to the value returned by calling our newly composed function make pi and passing in an apple. What's returned by make pi is apple pie. Now you may be wondering, why did the bake function come before the slice function? That's because the compose function works from right to left. But there's another function we can use named pipe, which is similar to compose, except we pass in the functions to call from left to right. Okay, so how can we use function composition with the functions we've created in the last several videos? And that's what we'll look at in the next video.